everyone does academies. And that means small group instruction. Six students with the teacher at the kidney-shaped table working on what specifically that group of students needs. But meanwhile, the rest of the class will be involved in universal access activities, centers. Uh, this, this requires a lot of uh, management. Before I can even, even start to do my small group instruction, I have to first um, put in place routines and procedures. At the beginning of the year, I spent a lot of time going over my procedures, my routines, and even my expectations for the students so that they know that when they're working independently, they know exactly how to do whatever activity they're working on, what I'm expecting them to do. So I'll spend about probably two to three weeks at the beginning of the year just setting up my routines, my procedures, and my expectations. I like to start by setting my expectations. What are expectations that I have in the classroom? Little by little, I scaffolded by giving them small tasks to do a little bit at a time. So we, we talk about what the expectations, we ha I have students who model the expectations, we practice the expectations, um, and then once I feel like, okay, we, we review it, then the next day we reflect. So we talk about what went well, what did we do well as a class, and what do we still need to work on. Viviana, loud and clear. I spend, the beginning of the year, I spend several different days of just explaining the different materials that we'll be using during academy time. So I'll explain that each table has a table basket, and in the baskets are pencils, and we go over our academy folders. So I'll kind of go into detail and explain this is where all your work should be at. When we did the transitions, where we quietly go into our next center, how to come in into the classroom is also important. How to get a pencil. I have a procedure for everything. <laughs> I can't help myself, I just do. Each group has a bin, and they're labeled like blue team, green team, purple team. And in there, the, the students keep uh, a folder where they either have unfinished work, or they have their fluency passages, or maybe books that they can read independently. Like on Monday, one student will go and get it, get the bin, bring it to their table, and then they look at the schedule and then they see what they need to do. Inside the folders I also have directions and kind of an explanation of the different centers for the students that they're going to in case they need to they forget where to go to or what to do or how to do that center. I have a calendar mm -hmm. and the calendar um, is you know Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and then it has like the rotation schedule of what they need to do. I have a circle wheel. All I have to do is turn the wheel, and as I turn the wheel, their table number where they're sitting at goes to a new location. Once we, the kids are comfortable enough and I'm comfortable enough, I can now start my small group. And usually my small groups, I usually start teaching them games. I teach it, and then Ms. Zorutel will reinforce it. And then once she feels like, okay, they can do it independently, then that becomes a center. So for example, if we're, I'm introducing the iPad center, I'll go over and I'll say, okay, when you're on the iPad, this is what I expect to see. I expect to see you reading on Raz Kids. I expect this is how you are able to access your books. You might be able to earn yourself stars. And I'll explain it, and then we'll actually have the whole class practice that one activity. So I try to keep it so that it's also interesting for them and so that they're on task. And then I change the skill centers, you know, every few weeks, every two to three weeks. Then I pull students from different teams mm -hmm. depending on what need I'm working on. Like if I'm working on short vowel cells, if I'm working on diagraphs, if I'm working on different blends or long vowels or phonemic awareness. I, I have newcomers who are learning the letter sounds, mm -hmm. so I may pull them for that. You know, I like the kids to problem solve. So I also give them different strategies that they can do among themselves. Like they can do like rock, paper, scissors. They know who goes first, who goes second. They have different strategies uh, so that they can solve their own problems. And then I can teach 